Welcome back, PGL Tavern Tales 2016 in Bucharest with me, Raven, as usual, and XXO as the guest here today. We often we don't see you often casting, so it's a treat for the viewers, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, I know how it stacks and you might have some surprises. Okay, so we'll have some insider info, and we have the last match for the day. This is the decider, again, uh, between AK Wonder and Hoi. Hoi just won against Gara with a decisive 3 with his Malagos Druid, while AK Wonder lost to Life Coach. Uh, well, he lost to a priest. Yeah. How that sounds, right? It's never right? going to feel good, is it? <laughs> it's never going to feel good. But yeah, um, we just uh, obviously watched uh, Hoi play the previous match, and... Um, I think he, he, he even said like he struggled a little bit with the deck because mm -hmm. he likes to take a lot of time thinking about his turn before he starts it. And then he got sort of punished a few times by the rope a little bit on the uh, on the back end of those games. Obviously, it's been quite a long day for everyone as well. So definitely not helping, but he's had a, a nice little break now to just sort of refresh himself and mm -hmm. sort of get his head mm -hmm. back in the game and you know just go into it a bit more fresh versus AK Wonder here. Well, I'm really curious about the bands that we'll see um, here with those two players because they played some unorthodox decks, right? Especially AK Wonder with his greedy Contra Warrior, uh, an example. And, oh and his Reno lock, right? He's playing Reno, I believe. A Reno lock that is mm. really greedy with both Alexstrasza, Jaraxxus, but also Curator uh, with Corrupted Seer. So there are some really weird choices. What do you think about those cards? Um, I mean, he wants to play Curator, obviously that's why he plays the Murloc, but mm -hmm. like we saw him lose the game against Priest because he didn't throw any AoE, even though he had one more. So it's like in those matchups, he wants Reno Lock for. It seems good to have more um, area of effect if stuff. So having one more to damage AOE might be good. Uh, we're not sure if it actually plays the Corrupted Seer as an addition, or is it replacing, like an example, a Twisting Nether? Right? We don't have no. We don't have that info yet. We, we didn't see the Twisting Nether at all in multiple games. So yeah, I would. Um, I would really struggle to warrant putting a Seer in over another AoE. I feel like the AoE Reno Lock has is, is needed because obviously you can only run one of, so I would definitely struggle with that, but we'll get maybe get to see it from AK Wonder now, but... For sure. Oh, we oh. also saw him play Power of Overwhelming, two copies of it, Yeah. and it's like, Power of Overwhelming isn't that great. It's like, it shows that he was struggling finding the last card. He like didn't like any 30s card, so he went with a second Power of Overwhelming, so I don't think he cuts Twisting Nether if he plays two powers. Okay, well... Playing two nether, uh, sorry, playing two <laughs> POs is kind of detrimental to the idea of Reno Jackson in general, right? So, and because of that fact, he was pushed to keep his one of his POs in his opening hand, even though it wasn't a good decision in a specific matchup. I mean, it was against Rogue, and it wasn't that bad because you do threaten to Savannah's PO against the concealed auctioneer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so you can definitely find some uses for it, but it looks like the guys are already starting with Hoy starting with his Druid. Versus AK on this Reno Lock, so we've been talking about it. Yep, so take it away, guys. Uh, we'll start with, as you said, Warlock versus Druid. And it seems like a good opening hand for... Well, okay, good. And it decent because there's an Innervate. So it's a decent opening <laughs> it's hand It's always for good druid. if there's an Innervate, yeah. right? If there's an Innervate, the things might fall into place. And, yeah, might go off, right? But for AK Wonder, this opening hand well, doesn't look great, but... It's not like he needs to be fast in this matchup, right? Unless there will be double innervates to something really silly. Yeah, time's definitely something he should have. And, uh, you know, already just having the Twilight Drake available is kind of nice, kind of awkward for the Druid to deal with going forward. But how do you... Um, uh, I'll be honest, I haven't really played this matchup specifically too much myself. How do you think it goes? Is You've played a lot of this Druid deck, so I imagine you've run into a couple of Renos now and again. Yes, I think when Rizzo of the Old Gods got released, the matchup was actually not that good for Druid because Druid at that point played big minions like Kasun or mm -hmm. some Ram Druid and like Greenlock could remove them and then just like outlast them have more cards. But since now you have more burst, more tokens in Druid and like now Maligos, I think the matchup has been becoming so much worse for Reno that's like a big uphill battle. And so like yeah, we see him have um, the Leroy OTK with double power overwhelming, mm -hmm. but I don't see him ever get to that against Druid. Like he will have to use his power well and just remove it and even for that he needs to like get a board first to PO a minion so he had gave Druid here like a big edge. Yeah, I think it's going to be very difficult as well because as you mentioned the whole like the Maligos package of being able to burst your opponent sort of plays with the Reno Warlock's life total, right? If the Reno's around 20, you're always going to be a little bit afraid and you never really want a Reno on 20 anyway to feel safe so... It's they only have like, like obviously they only play one of besides like he plays second power but mm -hmm. other than that he might have a big game hunter, he might 
have a Siphon, sorry, might have Twisting Nether, but that's only three hard removals he has in the deck. So, like, there were already two Giants and one um, Maligo. So, it's like, if you play a Giant, he removes it. If you play a second Giant, he has to remove it because he can't just take eight damage a turn. Then just, like, drop Maligos, and the chance he has a third removal is. Not Very that high. And, and as well, uh, we can see that the Moonglade portal in, in Hoy's hand, even the like, Moonglade portal can put out a decent threat that requires a pretty strong answer from the Reno lock as well. So, as you said, there's uh, multiple uh, huge minions you can play in this deck. And is Reno going to have the removal required? We're going to find out. Yeah, you don't like to play portal just for 6 drop. Like, just playing a 6 drop deck would be better, but you want to play it for the matchup you need to heal and just have to go for it. But that's actually. A very interesting one, because <laughs> it will really pull Yuck if it doesn't die now. Yeah, that's kind of nuts, actually, isn't it? It's going to force, like, a almost guaranteed trade, because I don't think you can just allow this minion to just give Hoi Yogg, just don't so think he knows it's, it's already there. I don't think it's that bad, because, like, you expect your opponent to draw Yogg anyway at some point. It's not like you need to keep him from drawing it. So it's like, it's just a card draw, basically. And then there's a chance that he always has Yogg on hand, then it doesn't do anything. So I think that... So th that big of a threat. The issue is just that his other plays are really bad. Like playing an other track against a 4 6. Like yeah, I was going to say his, really his Demon Wrath made that trade very easy. Uh, so it wasn't too bad. Do you think he uh, you know, was going to be OTT on, the, on playing the Doomsayer as well? Or do you think he just w really wants to blank out at turn 7? Because I don't think. Oh no, I think we've seen Hoi play Ancient of Wars. You'll probably be able to confirm that more than me. I mean, I don't no. want to spoil yeah, this deck. But I'm, I'm I mean not sure if we've seen it on stream. Something's time we have, but I've cast a lot of Druid today. I will so we'll, we'll see if usually we see. Usually Maligos Druid doesn't play it. Yeah. So we, we will find out at some point, I imagine. But the Doomsayers are almost certainly going to lock out too much of this turn. As I think that the, you know, guarding a 3-1 isn't really going to change too much for the Druid here. So yeah, you'd have to commit like a swipe. And you could swipe Wrath, I guess. No, you don't do that. The but question is just if you want to cycle your rest here. Yeah, like and just just yes, the auctioneer, it which is nice with West later on, but he doesn't really have a play. Like, do you expect your opponent to play uh, Emperor next turn, then you have to like play your whole turn to remove it because you have no minion to go with it. So I guess you save the rest, cycle the next turn, maybe get like a uh, innovator. Like, yeah, you have plenty of removal available to Hoy anyway, and AK Wonder's got a few options here, but Emperor definitely looks like the best one. It's not um. It's not really hitting the, the Leroy or the PO or anything, which is always nice to be able to just squeeze in a bit more extra damage because I believe we saw Faceless as well in AK Wonder's deck for like the big yeah, first sure combo. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, so he's not hitting any of those key cards, but feels like too good of a turn not to do. And again, his, his other options weren't exactly fantastic. Yeah, true, it used to have no real hard removal. Now they have York, which is basically a hard <laughs> removal. As well as many other things. Still, <laughs> since it's the only real hard removal, you don't really need to wait for an OTK or anything against Druid, you just need to win the board. Mm. So, getting all your mid-range minions reduced is pretty good against Druid. Yep, Hoy's just going to clear up the Emperor now with the Swipe and the Wrath. And already, you know, Hoy putting AK Wonder on 18 th this early is uh, you know, starting to pile up that pressure now. And we are edging towards Hoy having the mana to be able to play Maligos in some form of burst, you know, it's unlikely that he has all of the bursts, like, you know, the, the double moon fire and the living roots at this point in the game, but it's something AK Wonder has to consider because he could have it and it could just end the game out of nowhere. And we see AK Wonder throw like two really huge cards because uh, the next weather allows him to the coin next weather next turn, get an 8-8 eight, eight on the board and get like really big pressure here. So Hoy knows that there are so many cards reduced that he might expect already a Leeway combo, even though it's not there. So Alex Weather being a really good play for next turn and picking up the Power <laughs> Overwhelming, which activates the Reno. Yeah, and the Soul Fire pick from the Peddler as well. So, Oh, Jeweled Scarab in this deck. Okay, so there's a lot of options in Reno Lock. Obviously, you're only running one of unless you're AK1 and you run two Power Overwhelmings. But, you know, Scarab, not a super common pick in, in a lot of Reno Locks, I feel. So, definitely an AK1 stylish I've seen it before one. in this deck, but I don't really understand it because... <laughs> what what three mana cards are you, you really looking for? I mean, my point is just two mana, two are cards. Can Warlock do that differently somehow? Yeah, it's... um, uh, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out for him. But Foul Rage looks like it's going to be the option here for Hoy to clear off this as your Drake. Oh, no. Is he just going to go face? At this point, he does have Maligos, Living Roots, and Moonfire next turn to just finish up the game. If... AK Wonder doesn't heal, but obviously if you try and overcommit into that and the Reno comes down, it spells a few more problems for Hoy. Yeah, he knows that there are two POs, so there's always a chance that 
the Reno isn't activated even if he drew it yet. So like the chances of um, AK Wanda drawing Reno and one of the power wings at this point is like maybe around 50-50. So you could go for like the 150 percent chance to just win next turn. Would you go for this? I think so. I'm biased. I saw the hand. I saw how it played <laughs> out. I don't really know. Forget about the hand. <laughs> I don't really know what Reed Hoy could have made to this point. Like mm. I didn't focus on Hoy's Reed, so I can't really tell. But since his hand is pretty decent here, still has the auction here, he probably thinks he wants to go for the long game. Yeah, he, he definitely has a lot of resources. He's got Cycle, he's got the two Giants in hand as well, which as you mentioned earlier, both Giants plus Maligosa so suddenly, you know, almost too many threats for the Reno Lock to deal with. So definitely got enough juice to take this to the long game and it's going to be how AK when he decides to react here. As I don't you said, he can, he can coin Alex Straza, which is just... Yeah, I don't see any other play. Like, it's just so big. You see the opponent might, to might get that jeweled scarab <laughs> for, for a card that changes the entire game. I don't know. Oh, he's gonna go for it. Wait, 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 what? I don't understand. That that was almost <laughs> like a joke on my end, but I'm just a prophet. Oh, I'm just wants a prophet. To play, he wants to play Reno, I guess. He's scared of uh, OTK. Okay, okay, I can see that. He's scared of Maligos killing him next turn. That's why he doesn't want to uh, Alex Tuesa here. And this is the kind of threat that this this uh, Druid deck can provide a lot of the time. Is 16. You know, you would require a, at least a decent you know sum of, of getting those cards early enough in this game to be able to just kill your opponent and. He's gone for the owl. Yeah, yeah. Not bad Tap. to just have a silence available. Yeah, he has the coin first because he has 10 cards on hand. After the tap, he can. After the coin, he can tap. Mm -hmm. We know. Sunny's in a really good position. And we still see. Why oh, not have the York? This is like the board you want to play York against. Yeah, second Moonfire, though. Means that, that would have been an easy lethal if the Alex Strauss had come down, but. It still means that Hoy can try and continue to play for this sort of just Maligos burst. He has all the tools available. He just needs to try and push AK Wonder's health back down to a reasonable total. Yeah, you kind of want to develop a giant here. The question is how you do it. Because, like, you can't swipe hero power. You could, I guess, just swipe and play a giant. You have the option to Moonfire and double giant. I feel like you want all the bursts you can possibly get with Maligos, though. I feel like using. I mean, Moonfire. you know you need to win board first. You know that you never have 30. Yeah. Uh, damage. So like, since you know you never have the full OTK, maybe using Moonfire now, missing 6 damage might give you one attack with a giant, which is 8 damage. That's true, yeah. It's all just about judging potential outcomes here, and always, oh, again, just that the rope's gonna start burning away, and he's just gonna play the giant into my keeper, so going uh, wide on the board instead, and just saying, well, you know, if you have, like, Twisted Nether, then find his power overwhelming Shadow Flame that could cause some issues and clear the board out for uh, for AK Wonder here. But very specific answers that would deal with the giant, the 3 3 and the 2 2. Yeah, so you probably see a power overwhelming on one of the smaller minions, attack to the face, Shadow Flame, attack the other one into the giant, mm -hmm. and Mortal Coil it. Yeah, the Mortal Coil actually means he doesn't have to use Reno. Yeah, so but maybe there's a play with a Murloc that I don't see, like just the 2 damage AoE. Like you could PO the Peddler, trade into the 8 8. Attack your scar up into the 3 3 and just do 2 damage AoE. Mm. Yeah, and that, that you know puts another minion onto the board as well, which is just going to help chip uh, chip mm. away the damage here onto the druid. That one leaves you with 3 mana left. 3 mana uh, isn't what you want to have at this point. So I guess you got the Shadow Flame to be more mana efficient. It's going to get a good amount of damage to Oi here. Yeah, that would have been one more mana, so it means you can't play a 4 top. This way you can play the Skoda or the Argus. Okay, and uh, again, Druid's uh, uh, have a bit of a tough time dealing with this board. Unless he wants to you know, start using the other spells he's got, like the Moonfires, that he's going to try and retain for the Maligos burst. He does have Gadget Zan as well, so he can get some cycle done. But it's what what is he actually even trying to cycle into yeah. at this point? That's the issue. Like, Yogg? Is that like a realistic outcome to try and cycle into Yogg and then... Let let him do his thing. No, I think at this point he has to give up on the burst and just use Maligos as removal right mm -hmm. now. I think he can't take more damage. So I'd expect to see him play Maligos. I'm not sure if you play both Moonfires or one Moonfire and one Living Roots, but I am pretty sure you use to clear the board here with York. I mean with Maligos. Mm -hmm. And if you get bored, that means you have time. Like he has to spend basically all his mana to remove Maligos. There's no like cheap removal for 412. So that would give you time to just play auction your wild crows and draw your deck next turn. Yeah, it does actually open up a lot of options going forward, you're right. And um, yeah, that may be the play that Hoy's going to go for. As, as you said, you kind of 
have to quickly g give up on the potential Maligos damage because the Warlock's still on 30, even though, yes, Ubrino's been used. You know, already on 30 with enough minions to start really pressuring Hoy's health. It's, it's gone for at least a halfway in between option of killing one of the minions. Oh, he's actually getting Moonfire the other one as well. So he got the value from Maligos playing the roots to base just to get the extra damage in there while he could. Yeah, this way you can get held on to Maligos. Kind of threaten Lisa just with like swipe or like maybe Raven Knight will do another spell. So, yeah, I like this play. There is the owl to silence Maligos though. Yeah, but even then, a 412 is still decent. But do, do is, you it like like <coughs> is it like a faceless me. Soulfire play? I was gonna say, do, do you actually like, like faceless on the Malagos here? Like, I do like it because you never need the full burst. Like just the Leroy Soulfire POs. At, at this like point, that, especially, it's yeah. probably enough. Also, you didn't get reduced on any uh, combo pieces, so you never have managed to play faceless with that. So you don't need to save it. The question is, do you then need to silence it? Do you tap? Do you not tap? I think you tap, but then you would tap first. Just going for the Soulfire oh. face. I mean, to be fair, Maligos is now only hitting for four. You know, the spell power has been negated by the Owl, which came from the Scarab early on as well. So a lot of pressure coming down. And that Maligos, even like, forget about the spell power on the on AK Wonder's side, the Maligos is actually just a legitimate problem as it is now as a 412. Yeah, I think I would like starting with the Innovate because I think no matter what you would play the Innovate this turn, right, there might be a way, like a scenario where you don't play Wild Grows. But... Let's get the Raven Idol. Are we looking for what, a mulch out of the, uh, these Raven Idols, I guess? Yeah, maybe even the uh, Naturalize. Yeah, anything to do with this Malagos, I would say. And they are not the options he was really looking for. Mark of the Wild could help at least with the, the, the hit from the minion. But, you know, if there's. And there's not really too many of the spells you're worried about, you know, right, with the Malagos spell power, right? Hellfire is an issue. Yeah. So if you want to play on Hellfire, you'd have to play a hero power. So if the Raven Idol picks up an Innovate, then you can. Innovate hero power to get to 9 HP, so Hellfire wouldn't be lethal and taunt his minion. But now he's one man off of the mulch, yeah. so now it's too late. So, I don't know, maybe you kind of like Moonfire there. Okay, he's going to taunt up this Maligos, which is now going to be a 6-14, which is kind of nuts in itself. There's no immediately good answer that AK Wonder has until we see his draw, of course. Imp Gang Boss not really going to do too much. Like, hmm. he has a chance to just win. Like, if he picks up Hellfire, the game is just over. And Toy knew he had to take that risk. Like, he had no way to play around Hellfire. He tried, he played the second rival to find a way to play yeah. around it, but he just didn't get it. So, you know, he's just sitting there knowing he can't play around it, so walking into it instead and hoping for the best. And AK Wonder is like, it's very tempting to tap you. Like, if this was later, you just tap first yeah, because you never want to miss Yeah, if you get it, you get it. Yeah. Like, you just want to have that game to end and be done with it. But realistically, your hand is kind of terrible <laughs> if you only have eight mana to use with it. Mm. Like you have two nine drops, but you can't really play them now. So. Yeah, and, and we can see as well, because the mulch was picked up, even if the taunt comes down, it doesn't change anything. He taps into Twisting Nether though. And that kind of just has to be the play, right? Yeah, not another play, like, it's not a great play because you kill your own Maligos, but... Yeah, but you remove, like, pretty much lethal <laughs> from, from Hoi's yeah, side, so... Yeah, like, every time you're dead. Your yeah. opponent has so few cards in the deck that they can't have all his burst left or, like, all his damage spells. So, uh, what you what you feeling here, Sixo? So? so, again, Hoi doesn't know there's no Leroy yet, so he might feel desperate enough to play York. I wouldn't be surprised, but he might also think it. My best odds to win is just not playing on Leroy, hoping he doesn't have it. And uh, so he needs Leroy and something else, like he would need to have the second power of I mean, he already saw one. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just like an Emperor turn. He would cycle the Wild Coast and Hero Power probably along that. Yeah, it looks like Hoi is considering the Emperor. Just to let you guys know, that is a weird sort of spectate bug on the screen. But as you can see, it's Wild Growth and Emperor as the two cards on the right. So he was we'll keep you updated with the Emperor, that. But I don't see why he would play Emperor first. Like if you play Emperor, you play the Wild Growth here. So don't quite understand why he keeps hovering over the Emperor first. Yeah, there's nothing else he could really even do with you know with any of the other cards he had. So the Wild Growth is going to come out first, which is a pretty strong nod towards the Emperor follow-up. And Fandral gives him a few options for next turn at least. You know, he does have Wrath, Living Roots here, and Norish if he really wants for the following turn. So he could get some work done there, but he also has the potential of just dropping down Yaga, maybe even getting aggressive with Swipe next turn. So... AK1 had a chance to lethal this turn if he like draws either PO or Leroy and the taps on the other one, but it's very unlikely. 
Leaving an Emperor um, always feels better, but this, at this point, you know your opponent is limited on cards in his deck, like he doesn't have much left. Mm -hmm. He has no wishes we didn't, which he didn't play yet, so a lot of dead cards. So you just know the opponent gets to play all the cards he has, you just need to remove all of them and win on fatigue. So at this point, Emperor effect doesn't do that much and you have no way to remove it anyway. Like you could, I guess you could Hellfire and play the Murloc, but that way you probably are just dead. Not re yeah, really not a good turn in, nah. in general. You're better off just uh, building the board up, and as you said, dealing with whatever comes out from the Druid. So how much damage is building on top of this? Malch is two mana, swipe Living Roots, that's five mana, so you could play the Arthur track with that. Then that is five plus five plus three, so, so it's one damage of lethal. Yeah. Ugh. He might be scared of just a PO, like might think that someone holds a PO but doesn't. Oh, Fire Rage is a pretty nice pickup. Oh, so he knew his last card was Fire Rage and just went for the Lisa. That's actually he did have Lisa. Yeah. He only <laughs> left in his deck. That's very it's good. Very, yeah. it's very similar to the last series where he played in where his last card was Moonfire for for the sort of big lethal from Malagos as well. So looking pretty good. That was a really close game. A few huge swings that Malagos with the faceless as well, creating an awkward situation. But to be fair, AK Wonder did tap into the. Uh, Twisted Nether, which kept him alive a little bit longer, but it just wasn't quite enough as Hoy managed to. Uh, it's a close skill of like a very good player as, as Hoy is. It's like when you have like two or three cards left in your deck, you go through your deck. Like you imagine the deck list in your head. You're like, okay, starts with Innovate. When do I play Innovate? At this one and this one. I played two Innovates. I'm done. Then you like Living Roots. Okay, Maligos played one Living Roots, and later on I threw the, mm -hmm. the one that I still have on hand. Then you go like through your whole deck and try to figure out what cards you have left. And he knew Fairway is a card he doesn't have. He hasn't won the second copy of yet. So he knows he just gets that card guaranteed if he draws and has Lisa. Yeah, really good heads up play by Hoy there. And that's actually quite difficult to do, even though you can see uh, probably most of the day that the players have been taking notes in general. But also sometimes you can't just literally write down every single card you've played. And and even just the, the pressure of playing, you know, this is an elimination match, basically. The winner goes through to tomorrow. Uh, so even just the added pressure, just messing with your mind a little bit and making yeah, you forget about certain cards. It's if you like somehow messed up and like it's not fa it's not fair rage. Then you might just lose because you died fatigue because you have the board right yeah. now. You can get the board other ways. And then if you have the board, you do threaten to win over a couple of turns. But since you're low on HP, like a Leroy into fatigue damage could kill you. Yeah. So like he does look very stupid if it's <laughs> not a fair yeah. rage. It's definitely not something you want to do on stream, right? Just like, oh my last card will win me. Oh, it's not the right <laughs> card, damn. But yeah, it's going to be Hoy taking the first game there with his Druid. And we just saw him come off the back of a Druid 3-0. Can he do it again? It's going to be Hoy on his Druid, of course. This is his last hero standing versus AK Wonder on his Warrior. And because he is Hoy, he already has a White Ghost in his hand. Of course, of course. It's a good Druid player. That's trying to pick up Maya Keeper end. <laughs> you called it. Okay, and uh, what do you think uh, how, how this matchup is going to go here? Is the Druid um, kind of struggles versus some con uh, a lot of control warrior decks? Do you agree? No. Really? I think that the matchup is very close. I don't know who I would give the edge to, but I think that it's kind of difficult for Druid to play. Like the way you usually play is you try to draw your deck very fast. They get way too much armor. You can't OTK them, but then you like try to play your Maligos first and then your York because like Maligos has a couple of spells, and then you try to get burst, and after the, you get the burst, you try to outvalue them as York, which is weird because usually you go for the value first and then for the burst. Mm -hmm. But in this matchup, you kind of do it the other way around. So you disagreed on uh, with me on the Druid struggling this matchup, then followed up with it kind of relies on the Yogg. I win. mean, you <laughs> like can't just come on. You can't come on. say that a uh, 20 spell Yogg isn't <laughs> supposed to do stuff. Like True. The True. Chances that you get added value to your deck, like any spell that adds cards to your hand without drawing them, mm -hmm. like. There's a really high chance to get at least one or two of them with yeah, such okay. a big yoke. So like okay. I can get on board with that a bit, I suppose, since it's U6. So, um, so yeah, we are going to see the fireworks equipped. Nothing too crazy going on yet. And he has the option of playing uh, Acolyte coming up as well. So it's just going to armor up. Not, doesn't, I guess just doesn't want the Acolyte to just die to Wrath for one. Wants to maybe just guarantee multiple card draws. But like if he leaves it up, uh, if he plays it, he threatens to just like... Plateau Eco and Google at next turn. And it is like, throwing two extra cards would be huge. Mm. So I think it's a too slow play to just do it like, it's the only yeah, and, seven, and, and yeah. also as well, like something I would think about is if the Druid wraths your Acolyte, yeah, it sucks you only get one card, but also they've just spent like half their turn wrathing an yeah, Acolyte. Like you saw so him, but yeah, like you don't really expect anything to do it, for, do it with two mana. Exactly, After yeah. all played a white grow. so it's like, 
if both players spend the whole turn, one on Eclite, one on Res, and the one player draws a card, one doesn't, you just like get a free card. So yeah. like, you take one damage with the hero your face. Yeah, but you that's not you're worth probably card. okay. You're probably okay with that at this point in the game, at least. Do you see Yogg is already in Hoy's hand, so the overall game plan is coming together for him. But, uh, AK Wonder did guarantee at least the two card draw from the Acolyte by playing the Bloodtaker and has a potential follow up with Elise um, over the next couple of turns. He is starting to piece together some decent removal as well. Bash helps with you know putting together the big shield slams and slam itself is really nice just to cycle and then go into an execute on say one of the arcane giants. If you don't see any happy moves, no brawl, no execute, no shield mm -hmm. slams. So if he doesn't pick them up soon, arcane giants might be like a big issue for him yeah. to deal with. Since we see Hoy is going to be able to play a lot of spells the coming turns. I'm actually interested to see if he draws or ramps here. Because obviously on turn 6, it seems like you always draw, and against Warrior you are kind of tempted to draw because you have to outvalue them, with, like, draw faster than they do, because if both fatigue, you lose. Mm -hmm. So... But on the other hand, you usually want to ramp more often than not when you are hol you holding an auction on your hand, because... Yeah, yeah it gives you more like room to actually cycle with the, the card later Yeah, like on. the two mana you have on auctioneer might just be a wild cross, which draws three cards by itself. So AK1 is starting to build up the board on his side a little bit with the Elise coming down there. Slightly off curve, but not too much of an issue. The rest of his hand not looking too fantastic at the moment. Uh, Revenge not really what he was looking for uh, yet, at least. And yeah, pretty Hoy sure the Emperor here, right? Yeah, I was just going to say, Hoy has a approximately one million cards. And when you have that, that amount of cards, you normally feel like Emperor is a pretty strong turn, no matter what those cards are. That play is very interesting, him playing the Raven Idol now. Because next turn he could play... The Raven Idol for zero mana with the Auctioneer. So it means he values the getting the reduced of the new card, the one mana safe, Over higher the than the card draw. Which we see didn't pay off because the moon fires zero <laughs> mana anyway, but if you get like a living root, that might make a huge difference. So it's like yeah. it's an interesting play and he thinks he has enough card draw to not need one more, but Yeah, I feel like it's uh, not not an easy decision to make whether that was correct or not. It's more of like yeah, just, not just, sure. just a like style choice of what you what you value yourself more. So definitely, it's a correct play. Like oh, it's a correct play, but I couldn't tell if this was correct or mm. saving it was correct. Like, yep, so now the emperor is mm. going to have to be dealt with. But what this does is it opens up the option at least to use slam <coughs> and trade away. <coughs> excuse me, as I need choke to death. Um, he can use slam to actually start to cycle in some of them, but uh, the more important removal cards. Yeah, if he slams, unless he picks up anything else, his turn would just be to attack with a weapon, re weapon and play a war second war axe, which seems like he's going to do. No, he does want to re revenge, okay. Thinks he needs to cycle right now. I think the revenge was mainly just him knowing he needs half removal for the arcane giants, because his hand right now can't kill a single giant. Which for Vowia is pretty crazy because they have two prods, two executes, two shield slams. Yeah, and you know the giants are probably coming pretty soon as well. This point in the game, after seeing how he draws so many cards, Funny and having this many cards in hand as well. Usually, it takes like a lot of reduces or um, combo pieces to play Maligos the same turn as Swipe. Mm. But now he can do it on turn eight already if he wanted to. He could play Maligos, innovate coin, Swipe face here if he wanted to. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And we see the first arcane giant come out now. Nine mana, so. Not too easy to play this to, uh, well in the next turn or so. Yeah, but he, but he has so many options of, you probably of how see a swipe to swipe here. I expect actually saving a swipe for Maligos is very very relevant. So he might go for the Maya Keeper. I think I like the Maya Keeper here. But anyway, my point is next turn you will cycle with the auction here, and then the Arcane Giant is like minus five mana. <laughs> yeah. The Arcane Giant becomes very playable next turn if auction is the choice and. Already Hoy's starting to put together quite a lot of damage that's available to him. And you look at AK Wonder's armor, he's only on two armor, 29 health. So it's not as if he's even been able to you know, start stacking up the armor in preparation for turns like this. It's like, oh, okay. Actually, since he used the swipe, the innovate gets a lot less relevant. Because once you use the swipe, you yeah. don't need to have it for Maligos anymore. So he thinks, I have to use it. I can't leave the Acolyte up to set up for executes. So might as well just go for board now. Yeah, it does draw into a Brawl and then got his Eog as well. So, again, just a Brawl probably coming at the right time as he needs to find a decent way to deal with this board at least because he can't really just let Druid beat you down with regular minions because yeah. then, then you've got a much higher chance of just getting killed by Malagos. Could move the board with like, or besides the 2-2, it was just a slam and a bash. So, but I guess 
there are a lot of scenarios in this matchup where Brawl is just not a good card, so you want to get value yeah. out of it while you can. Yeah, I think because the, the Brawl was always going to be at least decent there, you just may as well play it. You can uh, still armor up afterwards and slot it in that I turn pretty easily. I expected to cycle the coin every time, because like, cycling the coin is always decent. Sure, it might remove some Maligos combos, but just like, you will play it anyway at some point to reduce your Arcane Giants. You might as well do it while you have the Auction here. Uh, pretty sure we go for four attack. Yeah, yeah. And that's really unlucky for him. Not getting anything to do with three mana. Yeah, has managed to push for five damage though, dropping AK one to twenty three this turn. And has the gadget zone on the board, which, although in terms of health, not too difficult to deal with a lot of the time, it does require an answer. And we've seen so far, or at least Holly's seen so far, that AK Wonder's never had great answers to any any threat he's put on the board. I think if Hoy tried really hard, he could draw the rest of his deck within three turns at this point. If he really wanted to twelve with York, twelve with Nourish. Um, mm -hmm. So, and once it was full deck, he has the reducer on Maligos and he has both living roots left. So that is a 26 damage burst, which mm -hmm. he can go for in the relatively near future. Yeah, and especially if you're playing Yogg first, then the likelihood that you know you might have done some extra damage as well to the warrior to just sort of pressure a bit more, so suddenly that damage becomes even more insane. Oh, I just realized we didn't see any Moonfires yet, right? He has, no, he, he has one more Moonfire, Yeah, right? and he didn't yeah. play any, he so he has three like moonfires. one Moonfire and two living with death in the stack. So yeah. if it was, that would be a 32 damage burst. Not too shabby. Even versus Warrior, <laughs> not too shabby at all. Rain is like very, very welcome. You want to get more cheap spells and you want to reduce both your Arcane Giants. Like, you just pick the right course. Yeah, here. just just a cycle. I mean, it saves you two mana because it costs two mana, but it reduces your Arcane Giants for four mana. So like, right course actually still ramps you. Yeah, which is an odd thing to see, but you know the joy of Arcane Giants. Eh? So I expect him to like nourish into double Arcane Giant. Draw three more cards. Play two eight eight for seven mana. I mean. Why not? Seems like a pretty reasonable turn to me. Maybe even use the rest the same turn if it was it. Because the rest basically becomes zero <laughs> mana. Yeah. There's Living Roots. There's, There's Moonfire number three. And even a Foul Rage as well. In fact, that was kind of anticlimactic. Should have gone the last Living Roots instead of the Foul Rage there. Yeah, that would have been pretty pretty insane. You just look at that hand and, you know, pretty happy if you're high. And but probably going to cry if you're AK1 to see. Okay, so. Do you have to face tank one of the giants to remove it? You I know you have slam bash, trade yep. three and chisel, but that way you spend six mana and can't play any minion. I guess you mm. have to go for it though. Yeah, you just can't take the sixteen. Or you can't even really take the eight on, on this. I mean, you, would only, you would never take sixteen. You would just take eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, like, yeah, it's like you. Im but what do you have left after that? You have a war axe, a Sylvanas, a portal, York. I guess you can York next turn if your opponent plays a new board. So that's. Maybe really happy because you don't want to have like no removal left and just have to play your own minions against two as minions and just take 20 damage instead next turn or whatever. It's not 20, but it's uh, just an hour to take next yeah, turn. Yeah, a huge. large amount of damage. So, <laughs> gonna start off with the slam. See what he gets off the top there. Gorhal, not going to help him too much this turn at least, as he pretty much had the turn locked in regardless, unless maybe an execute was drawn. Uh, that would change a couple of things. But he goes to 33 HP, so. Even if you see Moonfire, I think it's one damage off. I mean, second Living Roots off the top, it would still be one damage off. But, oh. but it is one damage off. He can also track, Parry Rage, plus out four attack, Hero Power, and just set up for next turn. So let's count again. It's three, four, five, six, seven damage from the spells. Mm -hmm. It's uh, five spells, so it's 25. So seven plus 25 is 32. He doesn't have any mana left for Hero Power. So yeah, it is one damage off, but I'm pretty sure we'll see also track, Parry Rage, Hero Power. Yeah, you definitely. Though I wouldn't hate just going in now, like just getting him to one HP because next one you have the York. Yeah, that's true. It also keeps your opponent from playing as York because the one HP if you play York, you're probably dead. Yeah, so the, yeah. the odds are pretty high on actually ju just dying if you try and risk the York on one HP. So I, I agree. I, I like the Ezio Drake. There's no need to rush it when you have this kind of damage yeah, I in think hand. Both plays are very good. It's like I think there's one of the plays that's like it's like a lot better, but I don't know which. Uh, but I think it's both ways are like very good. But play on different cards. I think there's like you can figure out what cards your opponent is less likely to have, and what's harder for him to answer. But both players are leaving him in a very favorable position, so I don't mind either. Yeah, this feels safe as well because this means that your opponent has to deal with his your Drake after just using so much removal onto the two eight eights, and then you know the odds on him dealing with the Drake, pushing himself past that kind of health, and and doing everything else in one turn is actually pretty low unless so unless Yog comes down. Him. 
because it, like a taunt wouldn't be enough because that's the spell damage. I mean, he doesn't even need the other track. So like, yeah. I don't think there's any yeah. portal minion that saves him. Wait, he gets he goes to 28, 23, uh, 33 plus zero power 35. So yeah, if he doesn't remove the other track, even a taunt is enough. So he would need some kind of touch. So I guess cork on elite is an out. You would need exactly cork on elite. Or anything else that denies lethal here? I don't so think there's anything choices. else. I mean, Yogg could deny lethal. Yeah, but like, <laughs> if he doesn't <laughs> go for Yogg, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like options. It is going to be Yogg, though. And yeah, this is going to be the last ditch attempt, as, as at least we can see, to actually even stay alive. First of all, Farm doesn't do too much. If I was like, yeah, that's right, he had Yogg. Nothing <laughs> I could do. Okay, none of this being turned, Pat, we needs a way to really uh, up his health more than anything. Clear off the Azure Drake, but as we said, it doesn't matter too much, especially because it means you cannot armor up, and that's going to be it. Yep. And that is a hell of a lot of damage coming out from this Malagos. You even get innovate if you got the last turn. No, actually, you with the Living Goods last turn, right? Yeah, you just innovate for hero power for fun now, right? I think you innovate the Cursed, get rid of <laughs> it. Just to get it out. Yeah, you don't want to win with that in hand. You don't want to take two damage turn even when the game is <laughs> over. See, AK wants the expression as he starts to realize. Oh, he's already seen the three move fires now, right? So uh, another brutal, like, you, you know, brutal destruction here from uh, Hoist Maligos. It's just burst the warrior down from pretty uh, near as damn it, full health. Would you say Maligos created a strategy that revolved <laughs> around killing your opponent from a very high HP total and it's not very fun and interactive? Um, I mean... Hoy did have to use Raven Idol as well to get the other Moonfire, so it was a, it required some form of setup at least. And we see AK Wonder obviously not too very happy at that. Yeah, I mean, uh, even though that loss. Like, the deck is not that easy to play. You need to set up it correctly, but yep. it's like it feels kind of inter uninteractive because well, yeah, you play um, you play the Raven Idols. You know, have to figure out if you need direct burst or if you need draw first to get your more burst and stuff. But your opponent doesn't do anything while you play Raven Idol, so. I guess so, but I, at least, you know, I, I'm going to say with the, this Druid deck, it is very decision-heavy. Like, almost every turn, it feels like if you mess up a turn, you can be punished for it quite heavily. Yes, you I agree. You, like you I think use your resources. In the current meta, it might be the hardest, like, be one of the best decks that's, like, the hardest deck. Well, the most, like, raw skill-based deck. Yeah, you can't say the most skillful deck because someone will just bring up some bad deck that, like, requires extreme decision-making. Yeah. But it's still bad. But, like, of the good decks, it might be the hardest deck to play right now. Yeah. I think it can be very punishing if you, if you mess up, actually. I don't think we've seen AK Wonder's mage so far, so Hoy doesn't know it's free's mage. We've actually, I think, played against AK Wonder in a tournament just two days ago in a team tournament. Mm -hmm. And in that, AK Wonder was playing Tempo Mage, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So Hoy will not expect this free's mage. Well, so we see how he uh, needs to deal with this. How, how have, you, have you played this matchup often? Um, I mean, you don't play against that many free's mages, but I think it's like around, let's go, 96% for the Druid. Oh, really? It's like <laughs> having Moonclade portal two Feral Rages while also pressuring them. Like just the armor, like just six health and 12 or uh, 16 armor might not be enough. But the fact that you can also pressure them and they can't ever kill Maligos. Yeah. And also the, the potential of Raven Idol to just give an additional Feral Rage or something like that, you know, just to really push the game out. So we are going to see Hoy take a, a different approach now and actually just go for the Living Roots. I think this is the first time we've seen someone play Living Roots with this deck turn he gets, one. Like he knows he can, if he gets some set of pressure, so AK1 can just like heal power pass, wait for like the ultimate uh, Emperor combo. Unless there's some, as long as there's some so kind of pressure, his opponent has to use Spelter's removal and then he can outlast him. So it's like so just so using it for tempo. Based on that turn one play, do you think Hoy knows it's Freeze Mage then? versus no. Tempo, or do you think that he would have done that regardless? He, against Tempo Mage, you always do that because okay. you have Wild Ghost next turn, you can't play it next turn, and you don't want to have him maybe call in 2-drop, and then you like play Wild Ghost while he attacks your face for a million damage because all the 3-2s Mage have mm -hmm. Snowball very fast. Yeah, we saw how he do a, a slight frown then when he saw the Doom say so come out, so maybe that was a nod to him not thinking it was uh, going to be Freeze Mage. So. Yeah, but he's very happy about this. Like, his hand isn't even that good against Tempo Mage. Oh, yeah, I mean, his hand so just looks too, too slow in general anyway, other than the Living Roots, and Swipe can help out, but th by this point, like, Tempo Mage could have actually just pushed out quite a lot. I would say true is favorite against Tempo Mage, but it's a relatively close matchup where this just isn't, so Hoi can't be upset about this. Okay. In, b in before Hoi loses, <laughs> I mean this 96% I mean, matchup. 96% like, a little <laughs> overstuff, but it's like, I'd say it's definitely over 80%, and mm -hmm. we... 
see that um, AK1 that plays an Antonidas, so probably with Barnes, I don't know if it's like some uh, cheesy Barnes deck or not. But yeah, I haven't played against Antonidas much because mm -hmm. people tend to play the torch list. Yeah. Def it's definitely the more popular list, right? The torch list. But yeah. we see Hoya did get the nourish just on time in, t in, in time for turn five there. And they just use it for the cycle to really start to fill up his hand and give him those options, as yeah, you mentioned earlier. If he earlier. wasn't holding the Emperor, he would have went for the ramp. Mm -hmm. But since you go for Emperor, your card is so cheap. Oof. Your cards get so cheap, and then like you don't need more. Even mana. Just hits Maligos for mo for more fun. Not not like you said. There's other options to win this game without Maligos, but being reducing it down to eight is just an extra added benefit now. Gonna see the fireball used to clear up the Emperor, not a minion as always that you can just leave up. And uh, it starts to put on a little bit of pressure with these couple of small minions here, the loot hoard and the engineer, but not gonna be too much of a problem for Hoy at this moment in time. So I wouldn't hate on just an auctioneer, West for one and wild growth, the way it was three cards. You still have eight cards at the end of your turn. Next turn you start with nine mana. On the other hand, you might also wanna save the rest just to use it as a removal after you play Mighty Ghost. So uh, because yeah, that's something we've not really touched on too much either, where like Maligos is almost just unkillable for a freeze mage. Yeah. You know, like Maligos can swipe, cut gets like he, get, he can't swipe, save, swipe just for nine damage to the face. Like yeah, because you're pretty confident Maligos will just not die if at he all. He uses two burn spells and Maligos just forage for armor and they concede. Yeah, but considering the rest, that's really good. Like Maligos, rest can always kill a uh, doomsay or anything. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't hate him just play a swipe and the Maya Keeper here. Clears the board, deals for damage to face, and develops his own board. Yeah, because you know the the thing with like swipe is always nice to try and hit through a ice barrier if it's the last secret to finish the game. But Hoy's not running short of spell damage, you know, spells in this deck that can actually do the damage to finish off, uh, you know, after say an ice so barrier. Anyway, so the way to it wins is just by like getting too much armor for like major deals. Like yeah. the only way for major to get close to enough damage is like putting up way too much pressure and just like dying way too fast. So I don't think that. Forking the iceberg itself is that relevant. Like I don't think an extra turn makes much of a difference. Yeah. I think it's just like not having enough burden in hand and not having enough mana to play your hand. Okay, so we do see a torch in AK one his hand, so he's playing at least one. In yeah, the interesting list. part here is that we see Hoy not go for the token but instead go for ramp. Which obviously is because he has the auction here. But it's an interesting, but it's also one turn sooner he can play Auctioneer Wild Ghost and just force yeah, deck. And also this gives him the option of actually Malagos Wrath uh, if, he, if he really wanted to so this um, turn. Not that he's in any particular rush, but oh. Yeah, okay. like this, because it, it, no, it doesn't get removed. So yeah. Every turn it's four damage by itself plus a spell damage. Yeah, plus the potential spell damage, so. You don't really want to play the Moonlight Portal yet because you want to heal after you get Alex Treasured. So. Yeah, Hoy just so hovering with the Maligos, but as you said, like, <laughs> what does the mage do to I really kill it? I think you cycle the rest first. Because I don't think you need it anymore, because swipe moves everything yeah, anyway. Yeah, you, you, so you the follow-up is, is guaranteed, right? Yeah, because don't you think have you the swipe to kill any minion that's played next turn. So I don't think there's a point in saving it, and the spell damage doesn't do it. So you don't play it. Uh, I disagree with this play, because I don't think the Maligos ever dies. But, sure. No, but I really disagree with it, like... I'm yeah, I mean, ask because I suppose the thing is, he's not really afraid of the one-one, and Ras just another card you can use with gadgets and cycle. No, but if you really once you have Maligos on board, you never run out of damage, or like especially you uh, remove it because Mage doesn't play many minions you have to rest mm -hmm. for. And so Mage's win condition is to cheese out the win now before he armors. So why take a damage more every turn? Yeah, that's true. I don't think. AK1 will get close to enough damage in time. Like I'm not yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to ruin the game, yeah, of course, but it's, like it's a different line of play that you don't particularly agree with. Well, it still looks like Hoy is in a very, very favorable position here. As, as we say, you just, just look at the options. It's just Maligos sat there, and there's just nothing AK1 that can, deal, uh, can, can do about it at all. Yeah, Hoy was like holding most of the cards in his hand for like the whole game, but he didn't draw a second copy of Living Wood and didn't draw any Moonfire, and only one copy of Swipe. So, like, AK Wonder expects a lot more burst than Hoy actually has, but yeah. just the threat of the burst making him play Ice Block here, I mean Ice Barrier, is already good enough. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have it. Yeah, and as we can see, it's got more the opposite end of the scale where Hoy has all like the utility and the cycle as opposed to all of the burn instead. So Hoy's probably going to feel pretty good about his situation now. He can foul rage if he really wants to at this moment, but 
Imagine we are going to see Gadu Zen regardless, so this is because why not use the cycle? This is where you see you have 10 mana, so you know the game is very late, and you have to count your opponent's damage, and think about healing up. Then you realize you are druid, and <laughs> having 10 mana is just because you play unfair, and your opponent actually only has 8 mana, so you are safe and can just yeah, draw so your deck pretty much whatever you want. play right close. And it, and 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 oh, that's a really good card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> swipe and living Roots face now. It, it's, <laughs> it's only getting worse for AK Wonder, because now there's Maligos and the Gadget Zen on the board he needs to think about, and this could just be the... Uh, the beginning of the end at this point. So that would be a 6 0 for High versus Druid in the last two matches. Yeah, it looks like it. Very Did you say impressive. Druid is a good deck? Apparently so. so. You know, I've heard it's a reasonable deck at least. I'm starting to see now why uh, there's a lot more players than at least I expected were picking it first in this format. Because, you know, the, the sort of natural feel go to with like the Shaman or the Warrior first pick. Uh, I but think it's but Druid, Druid seems or to shame, be performing shaman. super well. It's a Shaman, not like this. Yes! There's 6 0 added to the Shaman list. We got him. It is late, it's been a long day, but I'm still taking it. So, is there is there even a, an option here? I don't think so. There's nothing that AK Wonder can really do to pull this game out of the bag. You know, you have to remove the auction here because with the auction you up, you know your opponent can guarantee draw into more spells and that's basically guaranteed. Like, mm -hmm. There's not a single composition of hand how he could have where he can't draw a burst if you leave the emperor, if you leave the auction up. So you need to hope he has a very red hand and kill the auction here. But you don't need really to ho hope for quite a lot, I think, if but you're you don't AK Wonder. You have a way to kill the Auctioneer while playing your Intonidas, so, so you can't set up anything. So, Yeah, all, all um, AK Wonder's doing here is really just holding on, but it's only a matter of time. I mean, just just the sheer size of Hoy's hand would be is, is enough to really put fear into you. Yeah, like you just know he's got every option he could want. If you're at AK this Wonder, point. you know you're in a bad pos enough position to like have to hope for the very best RNG. So you basically look at your opponent's cards in the stack. So you know there are this many cards left. So you try to figure out what are the worst nine cards your opponent could hold at this point. And if he has exactly those nine cards, how can I win? Yeah. But even then, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, if even then, it's still insanely difficult, almost impossible. I would go with impossible. I don't think there's a single composition of our hand that would do it. I think you start with a favorite rage here, but actually, no, then you proc him too high. So you swipe, then you fail Rage's face, and then you rest last, I guess. You fail Rage first, because if it's Ice Barrier, you don't want to be stuck in playing the Wrath has removal. Mm -hmm. You want to try to find more damage then. Yeah, and even now we just see this just escalate uh, out, out of control, as he can even just drop double Arcane Giants if he really wants. He's got Moonglade Portal as well. You want to think if he wants Fail Rage's armor just to like, just really seal safe. the deal, yeah. And he actually goes for it. I think that this you could just do it next turn because you can guarantee to one to the second power and heal for six with your portal next turn. But just doing it now is that's so fine. So how do you want to make your opponent concede? By blocking his ice block or just by getting 16 armor? <laughs> um, I like the more aggressive approach, so I would uh, go for procking the ice block personally. But I don't think it matters in, in the long run, to be honest. But yeah, I like the smoke approach. Why not? And it just doesn't matter at this point, does it? I mean. Oh, he has, uh, still has a thousand cards in hand. He plays just double giant because why not? And uh, yeah, AK Wonder, I'm surprised he's not been a concede yet. Coin Yogg. <laughs> it could happen. There could be Yogg. It wouldn't surprise me if AK Wonder if there's AK just Wonder a mystery Yogg in the deck. He didn't play that many spells so far. It's weird because he's free smash, but he didn't play any Akin Intellects. I think he played one, right? Did he? Yeah, I think he played one. Um, but he has played a lot of minions. You know, we've seen, uh, mm. we've seen the, the two. Uh, the two gnomes, so novice engineer, like and the seven eight spells. Like the chance that like a eight spell yuck would do anything here is at pyro, like pyro, 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 <laughs> all to face to finish the game. Mm. That would be kind of nuts. But AK Wonder, you know, to be fair, his tournament life is on the line. He's just gonna sit and think about every single smallest chance he has to stay in the game, and, and there's no the reason hand. not to. There's zero cut on the hand. He ha that has no way to like play for a top deck, yeah. um, ice block or anything. So he just knows he has to go for it. Yes, but he knows that there's yeah. no and, and again, this Maligos, uh, as predicted, has just sat on the board all game, completely uncontested here. So looking pretty good overall. And Hoy takes his second 3-0 in a row with this Druid deck. And, you know, that is a very, very scary thought. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if Druid starts getting banned against Hoy if he keeps up with this. We have seen so far, I think, three Prios with the Druid, with the Malagos. Hoi had made it twice, right? And 
God damn it. Someone else was playing it like as well. But the issue is that when you made your decks, you already calculated your first band. You know the mm -hmm. opponent will never be able to play Shaman, for example, if you yeah. go with Shaman bands. You, you put up your out your mulch and drew it. You like take all your decks not against Shaman. So like now changing your band means you're probably very weak to Shaman. So you might still have to ban it if that was your strategy going into this tournament. Sure, um, that's a valid point. It's a complicated uh, format for the players to change kind of afterward, as you said, right? Uh, let's say you go into Conquest, you don't really care about the ban because the decks need still need to win, uh, win with each, right? Mm -hmm. But in this format, when you uh, design the whole lineup to do a specific thing and then you tailor the decks uh, to have a specific uh, matchups, then it might be problematic. But it seems like the MVP so far of day one is Malagos and Arkham Giants, I would say, right? And, he, and, and Yogg, however much we want, want to call to avoid, MVP. I really want to avoid... Uh, Yogg's done a lot of work, whether we like yeah. it or not, I guess. I really want to avoid <laughs> saying Yogg. And Hoi, we have here the... I think, yeah, the, the last last guy that will advance today too. Congrats, yeah, thanks. Right? How, how did the game went go for you? This I was kind of crazy. I think it went better this series compared to the last series, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. It's like I feel I had... I thought it did the most the right thing. It's like it, it's a really hard matchup, the Druid against the um, Boyer, mm -hmm. because you're on the clock and you don't have that many minions. So, I'm not okay. sure. But so, how do you, feel, do you feel the first game? Like, when you know that, like, Lee YPO would kill you at, like, oh. a lot of points. Oh so yeah. Did you think he have it? He has it? No. But yeah, I guess, yeah, I knew he had PO, right? So, maybe, do you want to yark that? No, I'm not just screaming as a player, I just want to know how scared you were. That was point. a little scared, but it's like. Mm. <laughs> like it's, it. it's like so unlikely for me to kill him with Yuck. I feel like he has there's no board at full uh, 15 HP. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, I said, I don't disagree with the player. I just want to know. How <laughs> yeah. Much I, I at point. I yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, on the back of the Druid, you went 6 0, actually, right? And yeah, uh, you have 6 0 just sitting ne near you. Maybe nice. that's what a lucky charm for you. So, oh. coincidence who made you play that Druid and who do you want to credit to like help <laughs> you play it? <laughs> I, mean I wonder. I'm going to give a shout out to Surinda for <laughs> helping me practice with this deck for this tournament. Yeah. Yeah, that's Good a slight surrender. BM, I guess. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> <guess>. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I had to say that your play in this match was, was seemed to be more consistent yeah. than in the previous match. So, um, cool cool stuff. Especially, the, I think it was more mechanic-based when it comes to decision were played faster, right? You exactly. weren't waiting for this to rope to appear and then yeah, you try have to, to discover yeah, cards, You have right? to get used to play fast when you... you need yeah. that Hearthstone APM. Exactly. Okay, you need to go quick. <laughs> okay, well, you advance to the top eight and uh, top eight tomorrow will actually play double elimination again. This is the first time since I... I think I like got a really long time we have seen a playoff system with a double elimination and... Uh, we have Life Coach, we have Hoi, we have Super JJ, we have Tessin, we have Sixo, who are also advanced. Uh, we have other players. Other players, <laughs> Stan Sivka, and who else? Th who did they miss? Did you say Crane? I'm not sure. Yeah, Crane. Crane. Yeah, Crane. And the, uh, the first game tomorrow will be actually Crane versus Super JJ. Uh, so I guess we start really early as well. The same, the same time as today, so 10 a.m. local time. Uh, we are GMT plus two here, and that's basically it. Let's wrap up for day one. Thank you very much, Hoi. Thank you very much, Xixo. Thank you very much, Raven, and in name of Nimsh as well. Is somewhere in the back. Thank you, Lothar as well. <laughs> thank you to myself <laughs> as well. Thank you, and uh, we'll see each other tomorrow uh, for another Hearthstone matches. Hopefully, not decided by Yogg. <laughs>